floss tube. Uh, it is Chrissy, Finally a Farm Girl. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram under the same thing, Finally a Farm Girl. And this is my uh, stitchy channel, primarily cross stitch, and today 100% cross stitch. It is Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. Um, so happy Wednesday. It's been, I think, about a little over a week. I did want to film uh, over the weekend and it just really didn't happen. Um, Philip, the last time I think we got together, Philip was getting ready to celebrate his 21st uh, birthday. If you are a new um, subscriber or a new follower, or if this is your first time, um, I have uh, five children and Philip is my uh, only boy and he is t just turned 21 and has special needs. So we came up with a really fun theme for his birthday to make it special and uh, we had a pirate themed birthday with uh, root beer floats and a beautiful cake made by his sister um, and we just had a nice nice get together uh, with with family um, so and I didn't cry which trust me I, I'm all that mushy gushy and with so many uh, with so many celebrations we've had between packing moving birthdays graduations uh, you know three-year-old's birthday and and then Philip turning 21 um, and you know I'm I'm one of those that it doesn't take a lot to get me to cry and this this journey um, with with each kid is absolutely individual um, it's absolutely something that is um, each one is so different and so special and uh, with Philip, you know, and special needs, I mean, it has just been, um, it has been a lesson every single day since, since you know, they, the day he arrived, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it has been a very, very positive, blessed journey. Um, so it was a really fun time and he had a really good day. Um, his sisters, dressed up like, you know, pirate ladies. And we all really tried to play the part and he just had, um, it was really, really special. So I, I was really thankful for that, that it went off and he felt good that day. And um, the house just seems to be so perfect for entertaining. I, I don't understand the difference. I'm not quite confident yet of what the difference is, but it, it just seems like we just all really enjoy ourselves um, in this house. So anyways, okay, so let's get back on track. Um, so I guess I should say thank you. Uh, the comments just keep pouring in after every uh, Floss Tube episode, and I'm absolutely so thankful for them. I do try to reply to uh, every single one, and uh, it was a little bit crazier with birthday festivities that I had last week, but I still think I was able to touch base with anyone who took the extra moment to, um, to, to leave a comment for me. So I hope that you will continue to subscribe and continue to comment and you can ask questions. Um, I'm not sure, I've, I've gotten a few questions, but if, if y'all have a question regarding my stitching journey, I mean, please feel free to, to leave that question there. Um, I would absolutely, I can either answer it there or I can save it for, for a topic on the next floss tube. So this is floss tube, I can't remember if I already said it or not, but it's 10. Um, so 10, yeah. And I did hit 4,000 subscribers. So that was, um, that was really kind of exciting. This journey is something that is hard to explain. Um, it's, it's a risk. It's, uh, you, you do give up your time, but you also are getting so much in return. Just 
with regard to uh, the friendships and the conversations that you have and the opportunity to view your stitching journey in a different way. So the numbers are cool, but at the same time, um, it really to me only tells me that I'm offering something that people are um, inclined to to sit back and and watch and enjoy and I think that's the most important thing so um, thank you thank you for sticking with me and um, helping me to I'm still learning and growing only 10 episodes and trust me I have um, I have a lot to learn and I, I know I'm not always very consistent uh, but at the same time, I really do want to keep it quite authentic. And um, I, I, I would like to do this once a week, but it doesn't always work out that way. And life is like that, and that's okay. And you're going to hear the dogs playing. Um, so we'll try to work through that. Um, and that is one of the, the, the biggest things in this house that is different as far as false tube. Without having a door in here, girls. Um, you know, I can't just all of a sudden go, I'm, I'm gonna stick with the floss tube every Friday night. That just doesn't, that just doesn't happen. Um, and I gotta say that I think that that's an okay thing because it means that the house is getting lived in. It means that I've got kids in the kitchen. It means that life is happening. Um, and I'm very thankful to have my 18 year olds still here and uh, their boyfriends and um, just, that just means life is happening within the home and that's okay with me. So, okay, let's move on. Um, if you stick with us to the end for, for floss tube number 10, I have another really sweet giveaway, really, really sweet giveaway. Um, and I'm excited to share that, but I will, I will save that. And I have a lot to show you. Um, I have a lot of progress on whips and things are settling down even though there's still boxes i'm ignoring some of them i just really am um i'm running out of space so i'm having to be really picky as to what what comes in and and, and what things um that i'm able to gift to others so and then a lot of my haul caught up so it, it just it all like i said after the uh, episode number nine a lot of it just wasn't here yet um so i have fun stuff to show you and i did make a trip up to um, my local needle shop brick city cross stitch in ocala florida so i did make a real quick trip up there um monday yes monday this past monday and um I, it was just it was a nice day up there because it wasn't terribly busy. So I did get to have, uh, Philip and I had lunch with the owner, Jean, and I shared with you on my last floss tube that I had a very special um, project that I was gonna get to work on. And the owner there is 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 kind of part of why I get to to share that with you. Um, so I had, I had mail, which is always fun up there. And I got some linen while I was there and I did some birthday shopping for my uh, oldest daughter, Heather. So I won't show you that, but I did have fun with that too. Um, so, okay, I say we start with uh, my whips because I was so excited that I actually got back into uh, a rhythm with a lot of my whips. And uh, I, I've even made a few new rules, not rules, but some ideas for myself. Uh, so I'll share those along the way. So, okay, so the first one is, this is a model stitch for Twin Peak Primitives. A lot of people have been really excited for me to finish this. It's really gonna be a, f a few weeks and then there's framing and, and photography involved at the very end, but I am, um, one, it's a joy to stitch and two, I, I know how much people love these kind of projects. So. I don't have names, I'm not gonna give you names, but I will give you a sneak peek. And I've gotten much more than done than last time. And I did find out that this linen is called vellum, 28 count vellum. So let's see here. So you can see the little green splotches. And I was able to work my way down here. And then over in this corner, I have, I, I left myself some easy fill-in. I always try to do that. 
Um, and then this is going to be, Philip would refer to him as Mr. Bones, uh, Boney Maroney. And so this is going to be a skeleton. And anyways, if I hold him still, everything is DMC, except I did uh, the pumpkin, the jack-o'-lantern, the cat jack-o'-lantern. I did go ahead and use sweet potato for that. And the witch's dress, it, it looks like it's showing through a lot. And really when you look at it, of course it's not, but I used coal, I think it was coal, but it will be in the pattern when it, when it comes out. And I only did that so that her dress would look, um, let's see if I can get it, there you go, it would look more dingy. Uh, the hat is right back into, let's see if I can get a little bit. I, I'm trying to not reveal her, her, <laughs> her, her face per se, but, um, the hat, I went right back to black and you can see she's, she's going to, she has a cute little ruffle on her, on her dress and she's, she's really fabulous, really, really fabulous. The whole thing is, so I have, I probably will not reveal too much more of this middle section cause it's, it's, it's really good. So, um, sneak peeks, but I have so much fun stitching on that. Okay, then I was able to <laughs> get back out my modern folk embroidery. Now, it had gotten packed up, so what I have is I am on the tail end of the April block. So I have April, May, and June. Um, so I am gonna push a little bit on this, but I'm certainly not gonna kill myself because I knew when we made the decision to move that this was going to get behind. There's a good chance I'm looking at two months after the finish for everybody else before I actually have a finish. So let me get it folded in half. But I, I, I did work hard, a solid good couple of days, completely dedicated uh, at night on this. So this is my modern folk embroidery for by Jacob using DMC floss, 924, 926. And I worked, hold on one second here. This was, this was where I was at. I wanted to make sure, I tried to, um, I call it the bones. I, I try to get my bones in on this one because if this is accurate, anything on the inside, you can be off I can be off one on a bird. I can be off one on one of these little motifs and it's really not gonna, it's not gonna make or break it, but this does. So I try to get all this in, even though I might come down here and work some of this because I want it to be accurate. Um, and that seems to be going really well for me. So like I will spend a night and just fill that in. But when I can, when I have a good clear brain uh this is the stuff i try to work on so anyways this is this is going to be april and may is in the dead center and it's this big triangle so let me show you a picture so i've got january February, march i'm over here so i'm doing this half of this coming across the middle and um, I'm trying to think of, I don't think I've even printed June yet. I know I've, this, is, this is next. So it's getting there, it's getting there. And I'm, I'm not giving up. It would have been very easy to say, oh, but it is, um, I hope you can see that really good. It really is a fun stitch. And I was so, I was so happy when I watched Pam and Steph um, that um, Steph needed to try to, Steph decided that she was gonna do this. I'm not sure if I've heard what colors she's picked because she was, um, there are so many options out there, so many beautiful options. So, you know, I, I love the fact that she, she jumped in. And if you think you might wanna do it, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate, so. Anyways, that is Modern Folk Embroidery. Somebody did ask me a question. Um, 
if they did want to start now, where would they where would they buy? You know, I went straight through Modern Folk Embroidery Jacob's website when my mom and I were together, and we did it that way. I do know now that you can order them off Etsy. Uh, you could call my uh, you know local needle shop. I know Jean um, herself has done two of his previous. Uh, stitch alongs and she did hers and run there. They're gorgeous. So I know she could she could help you out if you wanted to call there um, But I think there's a variety of ways. I think when Steph got her she ordered like the whole thing I do know that you can order it month by month now of the ones that are already released so there's there's a, a few different ways if you want to go ahead and um, You know join which I think that would be fantastic Okay, so let me put that one aside. Okay, now, the next one was Linda, Stitchy Linda from Instagram, who she just went to StitchCon. She just had to send her pictures of her with um, Pam and Steph and Sue Hillis. And um, anyways, um, she is a friend from my local needle shop. She's friends with Miss Jean and we have gotten to be uh, close friends here, uh, with, especially within the last uh, year. So uh, I, it was just so fun to watch all the, the she did a video, um, she did the, showed some of the, the freebies that everybody could bring at StitchCon, and boy, I tell you what, if I can make it to that next year, I, now that I've seen what it is, what it's all about, and uh, boy, what a wonderful job. I mean, between the posters and the banners and the organization, and I wasn't even there. But from what I saw, uh, what a well done, what a what a well done, you know, event that stitchers and floss tubers and designers and you know could come together and just have a good time. So, anyways, I was really excited for. Yes, I was a little envious. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it, her pictures were, were fabulous and I'm so glad she shared, but, but her and I are doing a, we had always wanted to do a Carolyn Manning pattern and it, we kind of got the bug and we decided we would both pick one out. Uh, she is doing Carolyn Manning sea glass. Uh, she likes some, a lot of tropical stitches and I picked red. It's just called red. So. We're doing a stitch long. The hashtag is C Manning Sal. Really easy. I also know 911 Stitcher is, is also doing a, a Carolyn Manning Sal. So, you know, this is one of those where if you already had one started, if you uh, wanna start now, it doesn't matter because I can, I can guarantee you I probably will not be finished. I know Linda is moving uh, much faster. Hers is a full coverage and I kind of, I kind of wish I would have, would have gotten that, but I, I fell in love with this one. And it's called Red Flower a Day Collection. She has another one of these uh, in a variety of colors like pinks. Um, and the only thing I wish, there, is that her, her uh, that Linda is doing, there, it, it's a full coverage and um, it looks so relaxing to stitch. And I will say that this one is really fun. Um, I'm doing, trying to do a flower a day, small or big, doesn't matter. I'm trying to fit it in and then just put it down. And, um, but there is definitely more. You can see there's, there's, there's back stitching. Um, there's, it's, there's a little bit of thinking involved. But anyways, I am using 28 count mushroom lugana and this is my progress i do love the mushroom lugana i'm not sure if it's, it's there you go it's i i love that little bit of taupe or or I, to me it's a taupe uh coming through the little border is is like holly berries and christmas foot. it's it's really a really fun pretty stitch I think that if I have learned one thing out of this, these are my floss, they're all DMC. I think that 
think if I have learned, I think with every stitch, every pattern, I feel like we learn something new, um, especially when you change designers. This is a very easy pattern to read. So I really appreciate that. Um, and I will say that I think that one of the things I learned is, is it's funny how I would have never put all these different reds together. Maybe a red and a pink, maybe a dark red and a light red or two primitive style reds, but she puts Christmas red with burgundy. And I think the thing that I've learned on this is to be a little more open with my color combinations um, because it is turning out to me so very delicate and so pretty. And some of these colors, if you look at them, like right there, I would have said, oh, that's a no-no. Like that's a no-no, that, that's Christmas red and that's, that's maroon and then down here you've got your your wine color mm -mm. but when you put it all together and you're only pulling out two pieces um yeah i i think this has just taught me to be a little more open about my color combinations um and maybe to be a little more risky um so anyways that is red my carolyn manning whip uh, she is housed in my stitch fold bag i'm not sure if i shared this one last time i think this might have been what had not come in the mail um, but it's the perfect bag because i've got this nice green it's not really christmassy but my grandfather i don't know why it just reminded me so much of him because he loved he had a, a running war with the squirrels when I was a kid. Um, but at the same time, I knew he loved them. So uh, this just reminded me of him. And, you know, uh, stitch fold bags uh, by Barry are just really nicely made. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of digging the whole handle thing on the project bag. So anyways, that is where I am housing my Carolyn Manning project. Okay, one second. Okay, so the next one was, I got an official start on my Lori Holt Fat Quarter Shop Flea Market Flower Project, which I am definitely not the only one who's working on this. I need to learn to go to the left. Anyways, um, so I finally got a start and I'm having a really good time. And Lori Holtz, uh, it's so Emma puts her patterns out, but Lori Holtz design and our, they are color, uh, which I love and they're so easy on the eyes. So it makes it so nice um, for me to walk around and pick different projects uh, wherever Philip's playing at the time or whatever he's doing. So I usually, yes, I have my magnification and my lamp and all that for at night, but when I'm moving around during the day, that's really why a lot of times I use the 28 count. Um, so anyways, I got a good start on this. And let me share with you, all of it is DMC. I think I shared with you last time I had at least gotten um, everything on these floss tags that I had ordered from Etsy, which I learned something. I was able to put the link on Floss tube number nine, I put the link in a comment for this Etsy shop. Um, they're really, really cute. And then I just put the number of the DMC you know, on, the, on the back. So anyways, gorgeous colors. And then I am using dot dot goose bag to house all my Lori Holtz. Uh, patterns and the next one will be this prim and proper but it's got the cheater cloth dot dot goose she's really sweet and she does a beautiful job on her bags as well so um i am using 28 count ale i love this color love it and this is my progress okay let's see if i can get a good okay so that's that's an accurate 
that's that's pretty accurate right there so i'm doing it my own way i have to admit this is one of those where it's not a model stitch um this is just for fun and relaxation and i know um look that's a dog eating a treat it's got crinkles inside of it um anyways so I think I might uh, have this for my porch and I've come up with a porch theme that is going to be sunflowers and, and honeybees and stuff from the farm. So I thought this would be perfect. So I am not going to change out my leaf colors, but what I am doing is changing out the stems with every one. So there's still Lori's DMC floss choices. There's, there's still her color scheme. I'm just randomly picking whatever I want to, to use there and making it very easy on myself to just get that part done. Then the flower itself, like even on this one, I did not fill in the second color of the inside and I'm not really missing it. I'm kind of liking it, but it doesn't mean I won't go back and do it. If I get a, a you know, just want something easy to fill in, I'll go back and fill it in. This one up here, I had decided that um, my mom had had a, both my mom and my grandmother, when I was young, really young, fourth grade, had a craft store called the Janley Craft Shop in Waterford, Michigan. Um, and then years later, when my mom had uh, retired from uh, her actual profession, which was a um, financial planner and stockbroker, um, she had opened up her own knit shop. And she had a, a a whole collection of buttons. And when she was done with the shop, I have several of her buttons. And then this is my grandma's button. So if I get it real close for you, I just thought how cute would it be to just do some of my own little, little personal touches. And every little, every little garden needs a ladybug. Um, so that I'm working down here. I make it real easy on myself uh, and I am really enjoying this. So that is flea market flowers. Um, I don't know that I'm quite on the schedule with the uh, fat quarter shop because I believe that Kimberly does that on Wednesdays and I just, I'm just sharing when I can share. I'm, I'm gonna try and do a chunk or a flower for sure one or two, a, a couple days a week and, and then move on. <laughs> That's gonna be the cats. Okay, now, last whip was, I got back out um, my big, big model. So I have three models. One I did not work on at all. Um, that's the one with the black crow. So he's on my list, or it's on my list for this week. I worked a lot on the Halloween one that I shared, and then I did work a good amount on my large one. Um, so I will show you that. I'm not going to show you the part that I, um, the very detailed part that I did, because if I did, you would know exactly the entire um, theme. But let me get it folded down here for you. Okay, so this is, this is going to be not easy to do. I was able to, right here, let's see here. Okay, so I'm working on the flowers here now. I was able to box this in and finish it, do all my red, and now all that I have left here is filling in. I had to stop because when we were moving, all of that, all of this full coverage, I'd literally put a hole in my finger, um, you know, stitching in hand and, um, I had to I had to let it heal. So anyways, you know, she's so pretty. And I think I've shared before how I was gonna try some possibly some beads on her. So I'm getting there. But I'm excited because what I really want to accomplish is the border. And, and get myself where you can see I'm coming up on each side and I wanna, I wanna just equal it all out. Uh, 
and that is on 28 count Joblin water lily. And if I didn't say what I was stitching my, um, now that I'm thinking about it, modern folk embroidery, that's 28 count Joblin lamb's wool. Um, I really like that. I, I'm not sure how others feel about it, but it's when I'm doing a really large piece, uh, it's so it's so nice to work with. It's just kind of like a blanket in your lap. Um, but that's that's just my personal opinion. Um, okay, so and it's in you know it's it's like an even weave, so it's so it's so easy to work with. Um, let's see. Hall. <laughs> Are they being good back there? I love how you guys can see them more. I'm not paying attention, but I love the comments that come in and tell me about what's going on with, with the pets. Um, so <laughs> they actually do a pretty good job and they actually transitioned really, really well. Um, okay, so Hall. Let's see. I ordered, um, I think I mentioned after I did my cross-stitch cupboard tour, which I actually, I think I got more, um, I had comments on, obviously on both, but I have people that have watched more of the cross-stitch cupboard organizational uh, video than, uh, than the actual floss tube. So uh, it was just fun. It was just fun to watch. Um, girls, so haul. I have never used uh, XG Designs linen before, so I put my first order in. And the first thing I got was the 28 count baby sheep. Now, this is gonna be, I think, a little hard to get the accurate color. And let's see if I go up in front of it. Yeah, it's it's very light. It has a little bit of modeling or antique and what, however you wanna call it. There you go. That's That's really quite true. Um, and then I got one that I wanted um, just for Halloween. Uh, there you go. That's right on the mark. And I believe she calls this avocado light. So both of them are 28 counts. She sent a, a real sweet little sample of her dyed floss, which what a beautiful color it is. I'm not sure, girls. Um, kind of reminds me of whiskey, but a little darker than whiskey. But it's really pretty uh, and really ginger. Do you need to come sit up in your chair? Climb up here. Come up here. Hopefully I'll get through this. Okay. So that was my linen that I that I got from X2 Design, and I'm so excited to add that to my stash. Um, okay. I when I was up at um, where did it go? When I was up at Brick City, the I grabbed. I, had, I think I had two or three. No, just two. I grabbed this one. I don't know. I know a lot of people have seen it, um, but I didn't know it was really out. Girls! Stop. Ginger. 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 No. Okay. So I grabbed Heartstring Samplery's new, it's called A Plant of Rapid Growth. I gotta tell you, I think that is just gorgeous. And those eagles. So I know that's gonna definitely be, um, I love that on my patriotic wall. So I grabbed that. And then I told you that I just, I don't know why, but I feel like Little House Needleworks is just, I just have, like I just collect them. Um, and it's a good collection, but I went ahead and grabbed the Sleepy Hollow. I thought that was cute for, for fall. And, but. and then when I was up there, I showed before that I, this was something that I saw 
on Instagram, somebody turn into a drum. And I was like, yes, please, yes, please, yes, please. So I did go ahead and grab um, some 28 count Lugana doubloon as my linen that I will use for this. So I got that already. Um, this is how they play. Do your dogs do this? They're like, they, this is how they rough house. Okay. Then on eBay, I came across uh, Wool and Flax by With Thy Needle. So I added that. I have to say, Brenda Gervais patterns too. The fact that they're in color, I love that. Okay. Now, I did catch up on a few floss tubes. Um, I watched Pam and Steph. I watched Colorado Cross Stitcher. She's doing a really cute summer camp. Um, I don't know if you've watched her or not before, um, but she's definitely one to subscribe and go check her out. Her name is Sherry, uh, Colorado Cross Stitcher, and she owns a knit shop, uh, but she got back into cross stitch. I love her, her very first floss tube to me. I just, I love that. Uh, I love how she shares that story. Um, so she is doing a cross stitch camp for the summer and it's, it's really cute. I really meant to join in with my Lori Holt because the first, uh, month, the theme is a new designer to you. So, um, maybe I will go ahead and join in July with a new, uh, I think it's fiber or floss. So I have never used, uh, X -Jew designs. And so I have some, so maybe I could jump, jump in, a, in the July camp. Uh, there's prizes, there's giveaways. It's really cool. I also, her stitching is beautiful. And, um, she shared on her most recent one, her, um, her all creatures by Barbara Anna. And it's, it's really beautiful. I caught up uh, uh, with Lisa, Kindred Stitcher, and I fell in love with, if you go watch hers, um, she has a really good, she shared her, when she went on her most recent trip for a retreat, uh, they also went to Buttermilk Basin. Uh, so she has some really good eye candy there, and she shared a new pattern, it's called a Patriots Sampler. And ooh, I'm gonna, I, I, it's, I don't think it's that easy to find, um, but I hope maybe one day I can add that to my stash because it, it was, it looked really, really good and I'm anxious to see her get a start on that. So if you don't follow Lisa, her, she is at Kindred Stitcher. Uh, she's also at Kindred Stitcher on Instagram and she's just always, um, she's just always a gem to watch. Okay, I watched Nicola on Hands Across the Sea. Um, and she's just, again, I mean, she's just grab a cup of coffee, sit down and nothing, but you get the good warm fuzzy feelings when you watch everything and see, um, listen to her voice and, you know, watch her samplers and, uh, you know, she's just, she's one of those where you, you want the house quiet and just listen. I watched Mama Loves You GB. Um, I can't keep up with her sometimes, but she has some awesome finishes. Uh, so she also was the one that got me a little bit to start paying attention to Owl Forest Embroidery. And so did 911 Stitcher. I really had never heard of them before. Uh, so it was interesting to watch some of them share on their whip parades, uh, their, um, kits that they would get from Owl Forest Embroidery. Well, not all of it is my taste, but I will say that the kits that they put together are phenomenal. It includes everything. And I happened to catch, uh, one on eBay where the seller said, uh, you know, your gain, my loss, I bought two on accident and I got a, I feel like it was a steal. Now, again, not really maybe my taste, but I also think it would be fun to stitch. And I also know that there are people that would like this that I can um, 
gift it to. Um, so I went ahead and I ended up with this the cat. Let me see if I can get it close enough where you can see. This is how it comes. And it was brand new. And then if I hold it up, it is the most beautiful. I mean, look at those threads. And so it, it, if you have a needle minder, all your threads, the linen, is, let me see if I can, it might be right, right about there. It's a little bit yellowy, but it's, it's very, very pretty. It's very pretty. Um, so I just had really been interested to see and geez, it was like a, it was like a steal. So I was, I was so excited to add this. Um, okay. Let's see. Told you it was going to be a long one. I hope y'all are okay and got something to drink. All right. I wanted to share. Um, we're winding down. I wanted to share the attic needlework. Um, you know, I would love, 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 love to go there. I know mom and I, that was, that was on our bucket list. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's just it's just not a hop, skip, and a jump away. And I know that you can email and order. And I have never, but I am, I am slowly trying to work it where I could just go for it. And um, you know, maybe my birthday uh, have something fully kitted and say yes, I'll take the silks. Yes, please. Um, so. I did want to share that, that Jean puts out the most lovely newsletter. And even though I don't typically print things out, but because I use my phone primarily, it's not easy to see. I just wanted you to, to see something. Um, this is the addicts, this is the addicts newsletter. And we are talking like 30 pages. So this is for April 2021. Every now and then, I don't have magazine subscriptions. I really, I wish I did read some more books, but I, I really don't. I stitch. Uh, my, my spare time is stitching. But I just wanted to share the work that goes into something as lovely as this. And if I just pull apart just a few because what she's sharing is obviously what's available in the store but she is also giving you these beautiful photos wonderful information on each sampler the designer she talks about her retreats and so I will keep this and maybe I won't print everyone out but I wanted to share that is a huge gift of her time. I mean, yes, it helps her store. I understand all that. But to put that together so that we can sit back and look at these beautiful uh, patterns and some of the, them are the photos of the original samplers themselves, but to just put all that work, uh, I just felt like it deserved my printer to print one out for me so that I could just sit and not have to have my phone try to make it bigger and turn it around. I just wanted to enjoy that newsletter for what it was. And I really don't use a laptop or anything. Um, so I, you know, to me, I just kind of feel like it's, um, thank you to Miss, Miss Jean and her staff and, and for doing that newsletter, because I don't think it's just about, it's obviously not just about the sale. It is, it is, she's putting her, her heart, into that newsletter so that we have an opportunity to see these things up close. And I just, I wanted to say thank you. Um, and I do hope that one day I will get up to, to their uh, summer school at the attic. Um, but if not, in the meantime, I will be working on placing my first, <laughs> my first order. Um, but anyways, 
Then I was going to take two seconds and talk about, as I caught up on floss tube, I did notice that uh, Christina from Whilst Iris Snaps had a new uh, release of her pattern that even before she released it, I'd been following the story. The name of the pattern is Matilda Isabella Creasy 1852. This is available now on a PDF download. And um, one, if you have never watched her floss tubes, you should. Uh, it's called Whilst Iris Naps, and her name is Christina. And she is absolutely lovely. Um, she shares cross stitching from the vault, um, which are you know fun to see. And um, she, this one here, just had such a personal story for her. Um, her parents have visited this this young girl's gravesite and sent her pictures. So I've been watching her Instagram feed and I just felt such a, so much work went into this and what a sweet girl. And I won't go any further on the story, but again, her patterns are beautifully done. They are in color. Um, and, and, and if you haven't watched her or checked her out, I think you would really enjoy her samplers and her patterns. So um, I'm really excited to have this one. I have stitched one of her red works. Um, and uh, anyways, I'm anxious to stitch some more. So thank you, Christina, for putting all that work into that. Okay. When I went up, the pattern that I'm talking about, I never knew. I never knew there was any such thing until I was on Instagram. Um, about five years ago that uh, there was something called a unicorn pattern. No idea what that was. Uh, and then there was, I can't remember how it went, but there was a time of the year where people would swap and if you knew, you would put out what your unicorn pattern was and if somebody had it and they gifted it to you and it just was like, oh, now I get what it is. It's this pattern that uh, maybe a lot of Blackboard designs might be a unicorn pattern to people. It's a pattern that is not easy to get. Um, maybe it's out of print. Maybe it's, um, you know, so pricey on eBay that it's just not in your budget. And for me, it kind of, it kind of built up because I was watching, I've watched uh, Stitchy Mommy on Floss Tube and she does a lot of mirrors, Mirabella's. I guess I, I always wanted to say Mirabilia's, but maybe that's not correct. Somebody can can correct me, but a lot of people call them Miras uh, or fancy ladies. Uh, and even though they really never sparked my interest before, I watched uh, Lisa Kindred Stitcher. Uh, she does a few um, mischievous stitches. I've seen her do, she has a couple of Miras, I believe. And so I've learned more about them and even Jean at my local needle shop has many in her shop and she stitches some. So I've learned a little bit from her and I walked in the shop the last time I was there and I told her, her and Linda that I was getting the mirror itch, but that the only one I really, really wanted to stitch was a patriotic one and there's only two. So she kind of looked at me and she said, okay, are you kidding me? And the next time I went up there, which was this past week, um, the one I was interested in was the, the lady of the flag. And um, I have my unicorn shirt. So I'm really excited. And I'm gonna tell you, probably starter. I will go so slow um, and just enjoy. But this is her. And when I was up there, I grabbed about half of the floss so that I could pick out my linen, which I, I picked out 28 count. Um, um, hold on a second if I can read it here. Tea leaves, 28 count casual tea leaves, which I've never stitched on, but it's light. Let's see if I can get it here. Okay, so 
So I want, I made sure all the beiges and the yellows and stuff from her dress showed up. Um, I just didn't want to do white and boy, I've seen some color conversions to die for on her dress. But I think for me this first time, I am going to stay true to the artist um, and just stick with, with their colors. But I, I didn't want the linen to be white. So a huge, huge thank you to Miss Jean um, for making, making those little unicorn wishes come true. The prices on those are astronomical. Um, so what a blessing, what a blessing to have stitchy friends, right? Okay, um, I have one last little story and then the giveaway. Um, I shared, I'll start with the story. Um, I shared on my Instagram page, it was, it was a little bit ago, um, and it was a photograph of a sampler at my parents' house. And I shared that uh, I shared the story behind the sampler, that the story was told to me that on this particular sampler, that my great grandmother stitched five samplers one year uh, for all her children, and my grandma being one of them. And at Christmas time, she wrote the same thing on the back of every sampler, like Merry Christmas, love mom. And then she faced them all against the wall and she told each of her kids to pick to pick one. And then when they turned around, like obviously, you know, that was their sampler. Uh, that way she didn't pick it for them. I, just, I thought that was so neat. And I guess I could just envision that happening. So my mom, it was always so special to her because she remembers watching, sitting on the floor and watching um, my great grandma stitched these. And um, so after my grandmother passed, uh, my mom had it reframed and it hangs so beautifully in my parents' house. And with a little more research, I've found kind of where they came from because like my mom said, it could have been a kit, could have been a kit from uh, Woolworth, uh, you know, who knows. But anyways, searching eBay as we do for patterns, one night I was laying in bed and I um, I saw something. I'm like, I know that, I know that one because I do look for uh, antique samplers and um, hopefully one day we'll add a few real ones to our home. But anyways, I recognized it. And even though it is not from the 1800s or anything else, I actually found a complete match to my, um, to the one that my great grandmother made. And so, I knew it when I saw it and um, I made an offer because I just thought, no, it's not my great grandmother stitching, but this gives, this gives my sister and I, it's just the two of us, it, it gives us a chance for each of us to have it. The story stays the same. And, and so if I have this one and my sister gets one, my grandma, sister, I don't really care how, how it happens. I just, the story, and, and what my great grandmother did, I think is so cool. Um, to stitch five samplers, whoa, I don't know. I don't know how you give away one, let alone give away five, but I will show it to you. Now the frame, I, I will do the same thing and eventually the frame needs to um, be replaced, but it came in really good condition. I was so happy about it. It's called The Chase. Here's the top. Sorry about my ring light being on there. And then there's the bottom. I'm so happy. So there's some cruel work down there. And I learned that it was from the Williamsburg um, collection. And you can actually buy this kit right now for $100 on eBay. Um, now I don't want to do that, but I just I thought that is how I came up with the information. Um, and it also gives the information about the young girl that stitched it. I believe she was 11. Um, and when I share the picture on Instagram, I'll share, I'll share the, the girl's 
the girl's story um, that the sampler is based off of, but the, it's called The Chase, and you see the little deers uh, or stags um, chasing each other, and I gotta tell you, I was just thrilled. I was just thrilled. Um, so, sentimental value, and I was excited to show my dad. Okay, we are down to the giveaway, and once again, the Twin Peak Primitive uh, gals have um, graciously offered a complete uh, kit. So this week, if you would like to be part of the giveaway, I will show you what it is. They just released a limited edition of Marshmallow Party. And I think this is so cute. So you will get the pattern, you will get the linen, which is a Zweigart, it's called Zweigart Splash. You will get all the, the DMC threads. And she always sends I'll read her note. So these kits go through their exclusive Etsy shop. They have the Twin Peak Primitives Etsy shop with their patterns, and they also have a website with their patterns. Um, and then of course, there's you know many shops have them, um, but they also have called TPP exclusives that uh, Diane Ashcraft, she, she runs that for them. So she sends it to me and then when a winner's picked, um, then all I do is when you contact me, I send the information to Diane at TPP Exclusive and she sends it directly to you. So she says the kit includes the marshmallow pattern, the 25 count Zweigart Splash Lugana 12 by 12, DMC flosses, and then the cup of cheer needle minder from madforminders.com, um, a July themed small zipper pole, and some hot cocoa. And then there's also a free ornament pattern that comes with it. So she's really great at her little kits. So it comes with, you got nail files. And if I pull out the, the needle minder. Sorry, I didn't open this one. There you go. It's a little cup of cocoa. Is that like the cutest thing or what? And then there's a little uh, zipper pull. I got to tell you, I have been on the hunt for <laughs> so knowing that that's a little Fourth of July zipper pull. I've been on the hunt for like a really pretty. I wanted a pretty like a special patriotic bag for um, the lady of the flag. Something that I know I'm gonna be using a lot. Um, so I've kind of got my, kind of on the hunt for that. But anyways, that reminded me of that. So, okay, so in order to be part of the giveaway, nothing difficult, but you have to be 18 years old because we're gonna need your address. And I, you need to subscribe. Uh, and you know, if you are, would like to, to you know, be a follower on Instagram, that would be great too. Uh, you need to be, um, you know, I, we, we try to make sure that these kits, there's a lot in there, that they go to a stitcher. So don't use any words in your comments about giveaway or free or um, anything, anything of the like. The only word that, you know, that I would like you to, to use in there is um, snowman. Not man, men, snowmen, S-N-O-W-M-E-N. -E Just because there's three snowmen. So that'll make it easy. And it's just, it's just that, it's just that fun, it's just that easy. So snowmen is the word, just leave it in the comments. And then when I get back with you for the next floss tube, I will use the random generator and announce the winner. And that's it. You get a whole, a whole kit and caboodle. Um, 
I hope you enjoyed this floss tube. I hope you had a great week. Um, I hope you found yourself with a lot of stitchy time. And if you weren't stitching, I hope you were watching stitching or thinking about stitching or doing some other crafts that you love so much. Um, you can see Ginger has now decided she's gonna settle down. She's not supposed to be on that couch. She's supposed to be on that blue chair right there because that's hers and that's mine. Um, <laughs> but I love her just the same. Um, and I guess I will see you uh, in about a week. And I really hope that I have a lot more progress and potentially um, a start. I kind of feel like I want to put a few stitches in uh, Lady of the Flag, but I, I wanna, I want something special to house her in before, before I do that. So I'll, I'll start with some floss tags. But anyways, y'all have a wonderful night, and thank you for sitting down and settling in and spending an hour with me tonight. My longest floss tube, floss tube number ten. Thank you so much, and hey, don't forget to floss.